So we continue Good to morning, talk lady. about potential infections stabilizing in Hong Kong, also in China. Are you seeing any difference when it comes to your business in your different properties? Definitely. Um, depends on when the border opens, depends on which city, you know, when travel restriction will be released and lifted. There's definitely different travel behavior amongst different, across different cities in Asia. So that's what we're seeing. So China has, you know, started, you know, traveling. We're seeing numbers picking up in China, uh, in Hong Kong. In fact, we have uh, had a very steady growth in market share. Uh, because we are one of the earliest to react to the pandemic uh, as health and safety is really our priority. Um, we're pioneering in upgrading our hardware um, in terms of making our aircon um, as well as sanitizing, working with medical grade disinfectant and preventing coating within the hotel premises. As well, I think also what's very important for us is training of staff. So hence our, our occupancy numbers in Hong Kong has, in fact, been really outperforming our, our peers uh, in the last few months. But Hong Kong has suffered not only from the pandemic, but also from the months and months of ongoing protests. And even after the pandemic is over, there are concerns that the protests will just be reignited. So how do you prepare for this eventuality? How, how do you really go on with your business in Hong Kong when there are so many challenges stacked up against you? COVID is definitely a challenging time already for the hospitality industry as well as retail uh, and restaurants. So we do hope that there will be some peaceful solution and, you know, indifference can be resolved. However, you know, the social unrest, you know, may, may continue in a, in a smaller scale. So in terms of, in terms of, you know, our cost and all that, we're definitely looking in how we balance between fixed costs as well as variable costs. And, definite, and also uh, with tourism arrivals and all that, we are already pushing for much more local traveling, um, vacation packages, etc. And also working with kind of cross-border corporates to, uh, for their staff for more long stay programs. Winnie, how quickly do you expect corporate travel and business travel to bounce back? It depends on city uh, by city. For Hong Kong, uh, that's for the cross. For, again, we are as a group. We are already having quite a lot of corporate guests staying with us as, because of the cross border closure. Um, so we are actually we are we are actually seeing a pickup in in our group on on that because. In, but again, it's more long stay versus the short stay. When it comes to when the corporate will pick up, it, again, it really depends on um, when the border opens as well as the travel restrictions being lifted and relaxed. So with so many you know, aspects of uncertainty, what, what are you doing when it comes to staffing arrangements? Uh, for staffing arrangements, we, uh, we are having... With the government policy and subsidies coming in, we are, we are actually have, we've actually successfully not laid off any of our staff in Hong Kong. We've kept all their jobs, and really, again, that is, this is our priority to at, during this time to look after our people. Will that need to be uh, readjusted if if uh, the the pressures continue in your business? And what would the factors be there? As I mentioned earlier, I think there will be a shift in the balance between fixed costs and variable costs. Hence, you know, part time, there will be maybe, you know, the, we are keeping more, most of our full-time staff. You know, the part-time staff will be really on the basis of when you need them. You have uh, talked about potentially more properties being planned and in development in the pipelines. Have all of uh, these pandemic challenges, protests affected your future plans? No. In fact, all the construction sites are still open. So uh, the pipeline hotels are all coming on board. So it hasn't really affected our, our um, going forward. 
Winnie, how closely are you working with government policymakers to ensure that the hospitality and travel sector gets through this with the least uh, amount of impact, particularly when it comes to unemployment? So in Hong Kong, government has come up with the, their subsidy as well as the employment scheme, which enables us to keep our people and they've for the, and they come up with the 9,000, which allows us to, it's almost 50% of our workforce that will, that can benefit from this scheme. Again, in different countries, there are different schemes that we will be working very closely with the government uh, to keep our people, as that's really the most important to our group. We've heard in recent days, uh, you know, some of these plans from airlines to resume travel, but there's so much uncertainty about what travel, be it business or personal, is going to look like on the other side of this pandemic in terms of social distancing, in terms of the numbers of people that will actually, you know, be going overseas and, and leaving uh, their borders, right? So is there a sense that there could be the need for major ch ch changes, I should say, particularly when it comes to capacity in your business? So the major after the I mean when the so the major changes I, we feel that it will be a few things. First of all, in terms of our in terms of our distribution channels, you can see that because domestic travel will be more and more imp important, and there will be much more continental travel coming along. Places like Japan, Australia, as well as China, whereby they have over. 70% of domestic travel will really benefit from, you know, the recovery um, in, the next, in, the, in the next 6 to 12 months. What we are seeing in terms of our distribution channel, there will be a lot more collaboration with local businesses. Um, there will be a lot more database sharing. We as a group have already started working with telecommunication companies, credit card companies. There will be more gift cards, pre-sale packages and promotions coming up. So I do think that it's a good time to, to, good, to search for good deals as well as plan for the next vacation.